Um, it is a pleasure to um, have each of you join us, and it is certainly a pleasure and an honor to um, have Ambassador Philippe Etienne uh, join us here at Howard University. Um, when Ms. Navas asked me to join, it, it reminded me, um, I have two daughters who um, were in French immersion schools for their entire, for the entirety of their primary and um, through eighth grade. Um, and last April, my youngest daughter was scheduled to go to France um, as part of her, her eighth grade trip. And my wife and, and I were also going to go along with her. And so the, the first family impact of the pandemic on us uh, was the cancellation of our trip to, to France. So welcoming Ambassador Etienne is probably the closest that I've gotten to France since having to cancel uh, that trip. But this has been a very eventful year. Um, we're each suffering through a, a global pandemic. And in the US, we've also dealt with um, systemic racism reckoning throughout the country. But this has also been a global phenomenon. So I'm, I'm curious to hear from Ambassador Etienne regarding um, not just the impact of the pandemic, um, but also the reckoning that has been taking place around the globe, um, particularly as it has impacted um, France and impacted um, him and, and the French citizens. So on behalf of Howard University, again, I'm, I'm very pleased to welcome Ambassador Etienne, and, and hopefully once this pandemic clears up, I'll be able to reschedule my trip to France and, and perhaps have an opportunity to meet him uh, on his home ground. So welcome again, and thank you for joining us here at Howard University. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tanya? Yes. Thank you. You tell me. I will just do a couple more introductions and, and we will get started. Um, we are very happy to have Ambassador Philippe Etienne uh, joining us this afternoon. Uh, Ambassador Etienne has a distinguished career in France's foreign service that has spanned more than 40 years. He has been posted to Germany, Belgium, Russia, and the last two, almost two years here in Washington, DC. And I was, must say that as a champion of foreign language learning, I was thrilled to see that Ambassador Etienne speaks English, Spanish, Russian, German, and Romanian. So congratulations to you for that. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, this afternoon, we look forward to in, an engaging conversation in one or more of those languages. Um, <laughs> at the Bunch Center, we always look for ways to allow our students to engage with our guests. So. Today's conversation will be facilitated by two ladies of Nubia International Sorority Incorporated, Ms. Ashley Tusana and Ms. Mary Kamal. Ms. Tusana is a senior international affairs major from Atlanta, Georgia, who is looking towards a career in international development. And Ms. Kamal is a senior chemistry major from Limuru, Kenya, who plans on a career in drug development uh, and education, equity and access in Kenya. Uh, Ms. Kamau and Ms. Tusana will lead our conversation today and have prepared some questions for Ambassador Etienne. Following their portion of the conversation, they will invite uh, some of our students from the Howard University French program to join them on screen to engage with the ambassador and ask some questions that they have also prepared. Uh, we didn't want Ambassador Etienne to be um, speaking into the abyss of Zoom land. Uh, so we wanted, to, wanted him to be able to see some of our wonderful students. And so that's why um, we're going to have these uh, students join us on screen. But we also invite the general audience to post your questions in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. Um, and we will uh, make sure that we alternate between the students on the screen and the questions in the, in the Q&A section. Um, this virtual environment has made it difficult to engage in the ways that we are used to, but it has also allowed for broader engagement across geographic boundaries and time zones. And for that, we are very grateful. We invite you all to tweet about this as well. If so, please make sure to tag HU Bunch Center um, and France in the US on Twitter and use the hashtag HU Critical Conversations or hashtag Bunch Talks 
uh, when you do that. We love to engage with folks on social media. And lastly, I just wanted to thank uh, my contact at the embassy, Mr. Vincent Michelot. I don't know if I said that right. Um, I'm, I'm still working on my French, but anyway, um, he's been wonderful to work with. And, and my colleague at Howard University School of Law, Darren Johnson, who actually is the one who um, connected us. And I'd also like to, to also point out our co-hosting um, with the Center for African Studies, which is housed when we are on campus, is housed at the Bunch Center, and also the Department of World, Language, World Languages and Culture, and in particular, Professor Jean-Jacques Tati uh, from our French program for helping with organizing a lot of this. So thank you all very much for joining us. I very much look forward to an engaging conversation and I will now pass it to Ashley and Mary to get us started. Well, okay, thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. Uh, again, thank you uh, Ambassador Etienne for joining us today for this talk. We are very excited to get to know you and some of the uh, policy initiatives that you have. Um, again, my name is Ashley Chusara. I'm a senior international affairs, economics and Chinese minor from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and I am representing the Nubia International Sorority Incorporated. Yep. I echo what Ashley just said. Thank you so much for joining us. Just a quick introduction to echo what um, our director just said. My name is Mary Kamau and I am a senior chemistry major and I'm also representing the Nubia International Sorority Incorporated as a, the president and a co-founder. Okay, and um, now before we start our questions, we'd like to open up the floor to you, Ambassador Etienne, just to, uh, I guess, have some opening remarks before we go into our own questions. Well, thank you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Provost. I am happy to provide you with uh, something which is not a travel to France, but uh, at least uh, a Zoom meeting with the French residents in Washington. and. Uh, I hope to also all of you in my residence. Actually, I, I tried to visit Howard because we are neighbors who are not that far. With my, with my wife, I, I walk very often um, close to your campus. And thank you very much for this invitation because um, even if I would have indeed much preferred to be able to visit your campus, I am so happy to talk to, to you. And um, I know that Howard as a community of students, scholars, Policymakers is uh, hard at work, not only combating the virus, but also reinventing the post-COVID world. And indeed, I am also pleased to continue a journey I have started in Atlanta. Uh, since you are from, from uh, Atlanta, Ashley, I visited the, the historically black colleges there, and uh, I wanted, have been wanting for a long time also to get in touch with the, the great Howard University. And my subject is um, the relation between France and Africa. Why? Because I was a diplomatic advisor of President Macron. I visited Africa, quite a number of countries with him. We were in Kenya, for instance, uh, and it was a great visit to Nairobi, but also in many countries in uh, Western Africa and other parts. And I think that the relation between my country and Africa uh, is really uh, an extraordinary uh, relation. It has profound roots uh, in, uh, in history. Uh, Africa is uh, in inscribed into France's collective memory in our culture, in our history, in our identity. Uh, it's a source of pride. It's also a history which has uh, its, uh, its dark sides and uh, um, on multiple occasions, uh, our president acknowledged that there has been fighting, errors, and crimes. There has, there have also have been great achievements and stories of success. I mentioned our president since I worked with him, but also because he presented his, his vision of uh, the relationship between France and Africa during his first visit as president to the continent in a, a speech before uh, students, a uh, big amphitheater full of students in the capital of Burkina Faso in Ouagadougou, uh, and I was with him. And um, um, it belongs to a generation that has uh, never known a colonized Africa, 
but she hails from a generation of men and women for whom one of the most striking political memories is uh, Nelson Mandela's struggle and victory over apartheid. And um, also um, uh, his generation um, is your generation because he's, uh, he's very young. Our president uh, was 39 years when he was elected. So um, I think that uh, um, the link between the past and the future, and I will speak now about the future, is represented by a marvelous people who live in France, who are uh, the diaspora. We call them the diaspora. We have many communities living in France, which are French citizens of American, of uh, African origin, of French uh, African citizens or migrants. And actually, when our president was elected, he decided to have around him an, a presidential uh, uh, board of advisors for Africa. And what, what are those people? 10, 12 people, young people, uh, entrepreneurs, women, men, uh, engineers, artists, uh, some very active in sport, all represent the diversity also of origins and uh, their families have uh, all different backgrounds in North Africa, in Sub-Saharan Africa, in different countries, not only in French speaking African countries. So those young French citizens have been since the beginning of his mandate, also his advisors for uh, this, uh, this policy uh, he has presented in uh, Burkina Faso in November 2017, before the students of the university there. Uh, two basic ideas in this politic. There is no longer a French policy for Africa. There is a French a policy with uh, African countries and with the African continent, which is a policy between equal this is very important for him, equal partners, friends with whom we agree, may sometimes disagree, but above all, it is a continent uh, which is our neighbor, which is a plur plural, which is diverse, uh, and it is our future. And we have a, a common uh, destiny uh, because we are so close by our history, but also by our geography and by our common uh, challenges. And the second basic principle is that Africa is the continent of the future. 70% of the African population is less than 30 years old. And 450 million young Africans will have joined the labor market by 2050. So huge potential, but also a huge challenge to provide a future, to provide jobs. Um, third, a uh, very important principle, um, we are in France and our government, our president, I am myself, deeply European. It's not only about France. Uh, we are, uh, as you know, integrating the Europeans, the old European nations. Um, after, even after Brexit, the European Union represents more than 450 million uh, people in the Af on, in the, on the European continent. And it is also this dimension when we talk about our relation with Africa. It's a relation between France and Africa, but also the relation, and not only with French speaking countries, but the whole of Africa, but it is also the relation between uh, Europe and Africa. So maybe uh, now some challenges for the future. The first challenge, of course, um, and I will not be, uh, uh, I think I, I, you have received the speech uh, my president gave uh, in, in Burkina Faso uh, three and something years ago. So you, it's a very long speech and uh, maybe too, <laughs> too long to read, but it's, uh, there are plenty of things in it. So I will just uh, limit myself to a couple of dimensions of this cooperation. The first big challenge, of course, is the development. 
I mean socioeconomic development, equal development, uh, providing jobs. Um, and this is obviously something which needs sometimes new thinkings, but it means also that we, the, 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 the richest countries, we um, keep our commitment. And the historical commitment, as you know, is to try to achieve 0.7% uh, of our GDP uh, in terms of uh, overseas development assistance budgets. Um, actually, in my past, uh, be, I was advisor of our president, but 10 years ago, I was also assistant secretary in the French Foreign Ministry for International Cooperation and Development Aid Assistance, which can be um, useful for you if you want to ask questions. So we have just voted in the French Parliament a pluriannual commitment legislation to achieve, it was one of the commitments taken during his campaign by President Macron, 0.55% of our gross national income uh, for official development assistance, uh, which is a big increase uh, in, the, in two, three years in view of reaching then the famous 0.7%. But as I said, it's not uh, only about public money, it's also about efficiency and also being closer to the needs on the grounds and to the people, um, which is also uh, something uh, I am happy to, to talk to you if you are interested with, uh, with some examples. One very important dimension in this uh, policy is education. Uh, we decided uh, to uh, devote special attention to education, not only for uh, development um, in, in, a, in, a, in a perspective of a, a longer term development, but also because we in France lack everywhere in the world and in the African nations, we consider it is a huge challenge to open up the minds of our younger generations and to provide them with uh, the possibility of uh, becoming citizens in their countries. Because there are other um, ideas, philosophies, which tend to uh, close the horizon and to radicalize uh, uh, the young people. So it is a very important uh, question for us to, 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 to grow together to make our new, new new generations grow as citizens, citizens in our countries, but also citizens of the world. And this is the reason why we have, have devoted much attention to education, especially girls' education, equality in access to education between girls and boys. And this is the reason why we partnered with Senegal uh, for uh, back in 2018 for the last replenishment of what the fund, Multilateral Education Fund, called Global Partnership for Education. Uh, I don't know whether you, you know this uh, uh, very important institution. And one of the priority recently of the, this global partnership is to catch up with the neg with to, to handle the neg negative consequences of COVID because COVID is difficult for our schools, our universities in, Fr in France, in Europe, in America, but also in Africa, of course. And all the efforts we have made uh, to extend education uh, with the equality between girls and, and, and boys I mentioned has been uh, endangered by the COVID crisis. And we, uh, as one of the most important donors in this global partnership for education, insists very much uh, to in helping uh, them, um, helping the those countries in Africa to uh, not to close again access to schools to uh, the most disadvantaged uh, populations uh, in their countries, which is again a challenge we we face also in uh, in our countries. One absolute absolutely essential challenge also in the context of development is climate. Uh, we are, as you know, France, as you might know, was 
in particular under the four last years in America, we, we were at the forefront of the uh, battle to keep alive the Paris Accord on climate, but also to implement it. And you cannot implement it without partnering with countries. And um, we um, have, uh, of course, um, countries in Africa, which suffer very much for desertification. Um, in Sahel, uh, around Lake Chad, terrible evolutions upsetting entire populations and uh, plunging into dire poverty, uh, women and men who live of farming, of uh, fishing, uh, or on trading, uh, and uh, which lose their um, activities. So we, we consider it is an absolute priority of our policy, and I am happy to come back to this. Another challenge, of course, which goes very much together with development is security. Uh, today, France continues to be present along our African partners in the Sahel uh, through military and civil operations against uh, terrorist groups um, and uh, with the support of uh, other European nations and uh, with uh, also the support of the United States. It's really important to support the democracies, uh, the democratic governments of those countries, uh, which face uh, really difficult um, challenges uh, in the field of security with the uh, uh, action of these terrorist groups, which not only uh, want to uh, attack um, some, some localities, but at one point, uh, one of them intended to conquer the whole of Mali, for instance. Uh, this is the reason why um, those countries wanted to get some help from outside. But the future in terms of security, of course, is the real is important thing. I mean, is to help those countries to, uh, to face the challenge themselves. It is the reason why we have uh, supported very much for example, the constitution of a multinational military force between those five Sahel countries, which we call the G5 Sahel. Uh, we are aware that there are other big uh, security and uh, democratic issues uh, in, uh, in other um, parts of, uh, of Africa, but since I'm in Sahel, I want to mention to you that we support very much the democratic transition in Sudan. Uh, and uh, France will host a conference in support of transition in Sudan on May 17th because of the incredible uh, opportunity which this uh, um, and because also of the, of the incredibly courageous action of the Sudanese people which uh, needs absolutely to be to be supported. Maybe a last word on uh, future challenges or present challenges. One, one thing very important for us is culture. And uh, I belong to a generation where, um, uh, because I have been in charge of international cooperation, also cultural cooperation, we have, um, France is one of the few countries which has built cultural centers in many capitals in Africa. And we have developed um, together with our African partners, uh, in their countries, a number of uh, festivals, uh, cinema, photography, uh, uh, performing arts, etc., and it's really important. And we have organized a season of African cultures in in France because we think that there is here a huge potential, not only of cultural um, creations and exchange, but also even for the economic development because culture is also a, a, a huge provider of jobs and, uh, and value for our societies and our economies. And Africa has obviously uh, an incredible potential here in cultural creation, but also another aspect which belongs to culture, which is this one brand new. In his speech in Ouagadougou, uh, President Macron committed that 
to create the conditions for temporary or permanent return of African heritage objects to African institutions and museums. And it is really a, a unique initiative, which has been noted uh, in all uh, Western uh, countries and um, um, museums, in the museum community, for sub-Saharan African countries, which have lost partly through uh, looting by uh, Westerners uh, or uh, during the colonization wars, a part of their heritage, we, we, we think it is important uh, to, to have this, uh, this policy. It's a policy of cooperation also. It's also uh, uh, about setting up museums in Africa and uh, we are just, uh, our parliament uh, just passed a, a legislation to uh, restitute to Benin, to the, the, our um, partner in Benin, a, a collection of objects which belong to a king of uh, Abomey, uh, Beanzin. Uh, so, uh, and the, the collection of objects had been uh, taken um, illegally uh, from this country by French. Uh, citizens and uh, we cons we consider that we have to restitute it uh, to this this first collection uh, to to this African country and close to to culture because also very close to people also sport sport for us is now an absolutely important dimension of development policies and of uh, this new uh, uh, development of an equal partnership uh, between uh, our countries we hope that the Olympic Games, Olympic Games, which will uh, take place in Paris in 2024, uh, will be a good uh, occasion to promote the excellence of African sport. Well, African sport is already excellent. <laughs> I don't need to see to say this with uh, colleagues from Kenya, for instance. Uh, but there is here uh, an extraordinary, uh, an extraordinary potential, and. Uh, there are sometimes difficulties for African athletes to train, for instance, and to 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 value to 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 value their whole uh, uh, potential. So we we try, for instance, to to uh, develop also cooperation in the field of training um, in sport. A last word um, coming back to the um, uh, development in economy and in gender equality, which I mentioned also about education. I was a, uh, President Macron Sherpa when we had the presidency of G7. Uh, it was in 2019. And one action we, we took, among many others, is uh, to launch with the African Development Bank a new fund of guarantees and of uh, training capacities to help African women to create or to develop their own businesses what we call AFAWA initiative has been launched in Biarritz in, uh, at the end of August 2019 as an initiative uh, by the uh, French G7 presidency joined by other G7 countries. And at this G7 summit, we had invited many African leaders or some African leaders, but for the first time, for the first time, and I will close my remarks with this, we have asked the uh, invited African countries, invited to the G7 summit to appoint Sherpas themselves. So we have not only invited those African leaders to come for a, be a beautiful photo op after a good discussion between leaders. No, we have prepared the results of the summit together with uh, African leaders, such as this, uh, the launch of this new fund, AFAWA for Women Entrepreneur, with them well in advance, we have organized Sherpa meetings with the, the African countries starting in February, March before, well, or maybe March, April, well, well before uh, the summit at the end of August. This is a good example of what I called an equal partnership, partnership between equal. We don't consider the, the African nations of today as uh, countries we invite uh, to, to, to a discussion, but with whom we want to prepare concrete outcomes and results. And I, of course, I could give you many, many other examples. 
and now but now i've spoken already a very long time maybe not hopefully not too long ashley so over to you and uh, to your questions yeah thank you so much for um summarizing that speech by president macron i remember reading it and from my understanding he was speaking on how he wants to build like he wants france to build relationships with the um with its former colonies basically and um one no, of the no, no, not 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 former colonies all african nations mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so all African nations. All right, so thank you for that. Um, and one of the things I realized that he mentioned as a tactic to create a friendship was to move on. And he said that, you know, we need to move on from our shared history. And in my opinion, I like, I believe that we all understand the effects of colonialism as a group of, on a group of people. And I believe we understand that the basis of colonization and the reason for its success is mental colonization and France, just as other colonizing nation, instilled an inferiority complex into a group of people, making them believe that their culture, their languages, their ideologies, and their religions were worthless and inhumane. And this conditioning was done using the most horrific tact tactics as well. People were beaten into abandoning their identities in order to make countries like yours rich. And as this is common knowledge and just one of the effects of colonialism, I believe we all have a basic of understanding of why we can't just move on from our shared history. You know, this part of our history is the reason why we have the many problems we have today. And as much as we would love to have that, Africans don't have the luxury to move on. We don't have the luxury to start anew and forget. And we, in order for us to succeed as actual independent states, we have to rediscover ourselves. We have to remind ourselves the importance of our own languages, the importance of our own clothing, our songs, down to the importance of our own minds. We have to undo, undo what countries like yours did. And as a country that seeks ways to create a friendship that is based on transparency, I will have to respectfully disagree with the approach of putting the past behind us. I believe as anyone, would approach any other relationship, you have to win, win our trust back. And this means allowing Africans to grow on Africa's terms. This means letting go of all ties that give France the power to continue to exploit Africans, especially through economic means, for example, the CFA franc. What I'm getting at is that in order for there to be a relationship based on genuine, equal, and mutual assistance, I believe the franc would have to break the economic dependence it has on its former colonies and other African countries that is based on the colony's economic enslavement. And for such relationships to exist, I believe France would have to be willing to reconcile with its former colonies on their terms. So my question to you is, has France been working towards reconciliation of any in any of its former colonies, such as um, Algeria? Well, first, uh, <laughs> you... Uh... Uh, if I may say, say so, Mary, you you confirm you 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 agree with me uh, in two respects. First, uh, uh, as as you, I don't think we can forget the past, but we uh, have to build uh, the future, knowing the past on uh, our common challenges. And second, um, when you say I didn't say move on, you said move on. Of course, we have to move on, but. Uh, um, we have to move on on uh, on terms, as you said, which are set by the interested countries and not by us. We agree with that. I said the same. And this is the reason why um, I gave the example of my personal example uh, experience of the G7. It's exactly what you said. We did what you wanted us to say. And the, the practical example you mentioned is the uh, France CFA, but it's a very good example because if you read the the um, the speech, the, always the same speech because it, it gives a vision of our of a, of our country. Uh, we ask the African countries sharing the France CFA to propose to move on, to take to take up your word, and to propose a reform. And the reform has been uh, recently presented, not by us but by uh, the African countries uh, contributing to the uh, Union de Monétaire de l'Afrique Occidentale. So um, the countries sharing the Franc CFA. So we want, we, we want to move <laughs> and we want to move on the terms which uh, will be agreed with those countries. So um, 
I understand what you say, but uh, what you say exact, is exactly what we try to do. We t and the restitution of uh, cultural uh, heritage uh, objects is also a good example, because as you say also, and we agree with that, uh, African countries have have to decide for their own future, but also to build their own identity. What I add to what you said, and what I repeat is that, and climate is a good example, we have, we have common challenges. The whole world, it's not only Europe and Africa, the whole world has common challenges, but Africa and Europe are neighbors and we uh, are uh, linked by those common challenges uh, still more than other countries, other continents. So this is what I would uh, answer your question. Now, you ask uh, how we try to reconcile with uh, our um, um, countries, uh, which were colonies, or um, uh, with, with which we share this, uh, this history, which can be difficult. And you mentioned Algeria, and thank you for that, because it is, of course, a very topical um, example, uh, example. It's... Uh, a country uh, with uh, enormous um, links, human links with France, with many uh, uh, huge uh, population in France, with uh, connections uh, and close connections with Algeria. And we, um, with the Algerians, have decided to commission two historians <clears throat> to try to make this work. Um, on the French side, uh, the commission was given by uh, our president to Benjamin Stora, who is uh, one uh, great historian of the, uh, of the colonization of this time and of Algeria, and um, President Tiboun, the president of Algeria, also requested a similar report uh, from an Algerian historian. So uh, Professor Stora um, has submitted recently a report on the memory of both colonization and war, because with, in Algeria it was of course, a war. And uh, we have announced already some measures, uh, very concrete measures, uh, or recognitions of what uh, the French army did in Algeria. And one of the measures is uh, the opening uh, before it is, uh, it should have been anywhere uh, um, required by law of national archives to be completely transparent on what happened. So it is just one example uh, of what uh, has been decided following the uh, report Stora. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that the reason I said that the moving on stood out to me is because, like I said, we don't have the luxury to move on. And as much as I would like for us as Africans to focus on the future, we don't have the luxury to do that because we have to undo a lot of systems that were put in place and structures that were put in place by our former colonies. That's what I was getting at. But uh, yes, but Mary, tell me what, what for instance, uh, France CFA you said, but what other examples uh, you have to undo? Because colonization was 60 years ago. Uh, I, do, I, don't say, I don't say there is there, is no, there are no other examples, but can you give me some examples? Well, the example that I gave before I asked the question was the mental colonization that happened. It was the fact that French, the language French, or like the colonizers, language was pushed onto us and we were made to believe that that's the language that matters that our own dialects don't matter that's important that's huge in terms of who we want to be our leaders if our leaders don't believe that their language is important or that their culture is important we're literally losing our own African heritage because of that and that's important and I know you said that was 60 years ago but 60 years ago is not long ago because my grandmother she's still alive and she still tells me what was what the British was doing to her family and to her husband during that time so it's not a long time ago I didn't say it is a long time ago I just said it was 60 years it is not 10 years, it is not 200 years. I didn't say it is long, it is 60 years. It is a, a number of generations, but it is very much alive. You, you take the language, you, you, you mentioned it, and I, I could have answered earlier because it's a very good example. And it's a very good example because exactly this week we celebrate the uh, Francophonie. Uh, Francophonie is celebrated by, it's an organization, international organization, which was created in Niger, in Africa. Um, in 1970, and uh, which unites countries all over the world. 
And the only member of this organization which has only French as language is France, because we have Canada, which has English and French. We have Belgium, which has Dutch and, 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 and French, but also many African nations or Asian nations, which have, as you said, and I here too agree with you, French and their national languages. But the, the, the value today of, of Francophonie is exactly to recognize the diversity of, uh, of languages, of cultural heritages. It is not to say you all have to speak French, absolutely not. Uh, Wolof is as important as French in Francophonie, all languages of, but there is one language, which is a French language, which is shared by all those countries. And I can tell you, Mary, that some of the greatest French speaking writers, uh, writers using the French language are not French. I discussed recently uh, in the opening of uh, the month of Francophony with uh, uh, somebody I respect enormously, who is a woman writer, Leila Slimani, who is of Moroccan origin and who is fr French Moroccan, if you want. She explained it much better than I could explain it, and I, I invite you to 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 look uh, to listen to what she says. Listen to writers like I don't know Alain Mabancou, for instance, who is, who is from Congo, who is uh, an amazing writer in French. I mean, the French language for members of the francophonie is is a language they can use and they use to 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 do amazing things but it is not the negation on the contrary of their of the other languages of the other languages of the african nations or of other non-african francophone countries so here again i am happy to answer to you with the language issue because i deeply feel that uh, the diversity of languages is uh, uh, riches and uh, I don't think uh, the vision of saying that uh, Fran Francophone countries have to um, do, do must for English, I don't know, but because English dominates the whole world, even in France, now everybody has to speak English like uh, <laughs> I do today. But we, uh, we see in French Francophone countries that there is a respect for the diversity uh, of those languages. And one country can share a language like French with many other countries and fully respect its own national languages, original languages. So this is our, our vision of uh, what we call francophonie. Right, and um, I understand that there are many languages like you mentioned, and there's a diverse group of languages and that are all respected. But the whole point is that 60 years ago, our languages weren't respected and the French language or the colonizers language was pushed onto us as a weapon. You know, it was not suggested. It was pushed onto us. We were forced to change our whole lifestyle just to fit the French language. But I will finish and then I'll let Ashley. Um, uh, I'm, I'm happy to continue to discuss with you if you want. <laughs> Ashley can ask her question. <laughs> You're fine, Mary. Thank you so much, Ambassador Etienne, for being patient with us and answering our questions. Thank you, Mary, for your questions and your insight uh, as uh, an African-American um, now. Uh, uh, also, thank you for the overview of the development uh, initiatives and the African-related initiatives or your domestic initiatives for France, as well as like more insight and understanding of the domestic goals for development and exchange. Um, it, it's amazing to speak to someone that is so educated and devoted to the subject of the advancement of French and African relations as we don't necessarily get the chance to speak to you all uh, in our classroom settings. Um, I do commend your country for the efforts towards repatriation of African art and the promotion of legitimacy of African ideologies, especially in Macron's appointment of the African Council of, of Advisors uh, for his speeches, etc and uh, the African languages and dialects of French, as you just spoke of. Um, within the speech, there was an emphasis on the importance of not only investing in the youth of Africa, but also the importance of listening to them as well. At the time of the speech in 2017, he mentioned that he was already speaking with the youth and um, of many Francophone countries for from like completely different backgrounds um, for about, and now that we're, 
um, in 2021, about four years later, after speaking with the youth and listening to their troubles and desires, how is your nation contributing to the initiatives for financial um, agency, cultural, economic empowerment of the youth and women? And um, also, Macron spoke about legitimizing the African education. What are your thoughts on that? Um, well, already then, back then, I remember there was an incredible dialogue because uh, every student wanted to ask questions and partly the same questions or the same remarks like Mary. So at that point, I realized being there that it was really important to, to discuss this, to discuss openly also as we did with uh, Mary, not, uh, not agreeing and tr starting from different perspectives. Uh, I, I think that um, the education indeed um, is, is really important and what we did uh, after a couple of months after this speech was uh, this conference in Dakar for uh, financing much more this uh, global partnership, partnership for education, which is about building schools, but also uh, training teachers, uh, financing the education policy by the, the, the benefiting countries uh, to develop their curricula and to, uh, to, to develop, uh, to, 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 to satisfy their needs in, in terms of education with a special accent on uh, equality uh, to, in access to school between girls and, and boys. Uh, Another thing which is really important, uh, I think, in uh, answering the, the, the expectations by young uh, people in Africa, but also in, in our country, because finally the, the, the expectations are not that different from one nation to another, is jobs, qualifications, skills. Um, this is the reason why we develop, uh, and it was one of the uh, uh, most important uh, projects uh, represented in the advisory council, the presidential advisory council on Africa. Uh, we had there some young French African persons, specialists of computers. And one of the initiatives we launched is what we call digital Africa is to, uh, to, to connect with uh, um, um, people through our, we have a national agency, French Agency for Development, and to help develop uh, not only skills, because the skills, frankly, they, they, they exist already, but to, to, to help young people uh, to create their business using their digital skills. So this is another example. And I mentioned also the financing of um, female entrepreneurship, but I don't come back to this because I already mentioned it. I would give this as a third example. Okay. Thank you. Um, though this may be kind of in the future of, I guess, uh, African development in uh, the French initiatives, but uh, how do you all uh, plan to combat uh, neoliberalism in the fact that and a lot of times when you do develop countries, there is a sense of like diminishing the cultural integrity of that, that is already present. How do you plan to, uh, I guess, combat neoliberalism in that way as France? You mean illiberalism, the political, to, to, to fight for democracy, you mean? Uh, yes, that and also like economically. The liberalism you meant, you said liberalism, economic liberalism, excessive liberalism. Okay, I got your question. No, it's a it's a very important question uh, because um, we need regulations. We cannot simply leave uh, uh, the money deciding uh, over everything. So we in in my country we are in favor of our regulations including international regulations, including in the digital world, which uh, uh, give the possibility, for instance, uh, to, uh, to, young, to young businesses to be started and to develop, um, to uh, 
uh, to have competition or uh, regulation or pro-competition regulations, which are liberal in a way, but which will prevent the biggest companies to buy immediately and to stifle uh, initiatives so that we, uh, we can develop our own and the African nations also can develop their own companies uh, without being immediately uh, taken over by big uh, international companies. So we, we are in favor of a civil law, civil law for business. We have been uh, fighting with uh, African lawyers, especially in French speaking country for years to develop uh, uh, with our the uh, bringing our own experience because we are a, a country of civil law in business uh, to to develop civil law regulations which uh, are an instrument to fight against corruption first but also to fight uh, against the stronger uh, uh, dominating the others like in in a jungle without laws so we 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 have instruments which are regulatory and which belong to law, which is uh, the development of the state of law in all countries. And it's, it is one of the orientations of our um, um, development assistance policy. Okay, thank you so much uh, for that answer. Uh, we're actually going to start asking for the French, the, the Howard University French students to, um, I guess, show themselves on screen now so they can begin answering their questions, hopefully some in French. Um, so yeah, I guess you guys can show yourselves and we can start with Jude, since you're the first person to start if you'd like. Okay, um, so in French, I'll ask the question. Well, well, first, um, introduce yourself, if you will, uh, your Howard intro, and then uh, you can go on with your question. Either you can start in French, and then uh, please translate for the rest of us that cannot speak it. Okay. Um, I'm Jude. I'm a third-year sociology major, French minor from Washington, D.C. area. And um, I will One moment. Jude, your connection is lagging. Yes. Would you like to type your question into the chat? Um, and maybe we can have someone else begin with a question and then we can answer your question next. Um, like to go next? Yeah. I can go next. Oopsies. Okay. Um, je vais commencer en français. Bonjour. Uh, merci oh. beaucoup pour nous. Uh, Enjoindre aujourd'hui, euh, Monsieur Etienne. Je m'appelle Soumeya El Kashif et je suis dans ma deuxième année à Howard. J'étudie les affaires internationales et français et ma deuxième est arabe. Et merci beaucoup pour tes commentaires euh, sur Soudan. Je suis soudanaise américain aussi, euh, donc merci. Et my name is Soumeya El Kashif. I'm an international affairs and French double major, Arabic minor from Columbia, Maryland. Um, I'm a sophomore, and my first question, I saw a lot of questions in the Q&A that are similar to mine, mais um, premièrement, parce que vous êtes un ambassadeur, vous êtes limité par ce que vous pouvez dire et faire, uh, comment vous parlez de sujets d'inclusivité et d'égalité pendant que vous êtes dans cette position, and je, I'm going to uh, interpret that now. Um, I just asked, because he's an ambassador, he's restricted in which he can say and do in his position because of the government, obviously. So I asked how he speaks and advocates on issues of um, inclusivity and equality of Afro-French people within his position and career. Well, thank you. It's a, it's a very good question because uh, as ambassador, I represent my country and I cannot, uh, I have to 
to represent the, the, the positions, the policy of my country, of course. But you, I don't think it, it, it does exclude uh, a sincerity first. Uh, I agree with uh, this policy because I, I think, uh, especially in what I'm talking about today, which is uh, our relations with Africa, things are really changing a lot, but also because um, um, there is this, uh, a uh, human dimension in this uh, in this question, which is really important, because we had with uh, uh, Mary at the beginning a discussion about uh, colonization and and so on and so on. I don't want to give you the impression again that we forget this past, because this past is our present with the whole, and it is your question also uh, or your remark, which is really a, a very important remark. We have so many French people, and of course. In, Af in the Africa, in, in in our friend friends in Africa, it's it's the same who share a, a, a history, and we have so many French citizens now we, who are um, who have this origin, uh, which is means that this this uh, human dimension is really important, and I I can what I would answer to your question to the two parts of your question there is one one conclusion which with which i agree i am not indeed the best person to speak about all of this the best persons and maybe we can organize an exchange with you uh in in the future with the same group would be for you to talk to a, a french african uh young person explaining to you his personal experience of a citizen and i would advise i would maybe ask one of those um, persons who have advised our government on 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 our relations with africa on new on new developments i would uh, i would propose to 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 send such uh, people not to send them physically in person but uh, we assume we can make uh, really big things and my policy as ambassador is to speak with you like today because it's my it's my not only my responsibility but also my I am happy to do that I like doing that especially in universities and I regret not to be it in person but my responsibility is also to bring to the United States uh, uh, people representing the the French society better than I can do because indeed I am also in an, an official person I don't know whether I answered your question. Uh, thank you for the response. Um, I think there might have been some confusion. Um, I've met some Afro French people and I understand their um, experience. My question was more about what in your government position and also what white French people in those positions, how, what you guys do to advocate for these real issues in your country and of your diverse population, um, how you can do that within your position. Well, we are citizens also, we are not only uh, uh, civil servants, and uh, I have also my own uh, personal commitments in my own society, I have my children, uh, I have friends, um, it happens I have also personal friends in Africa, uh, so I use this uh, personal relationship to act and to um, I don't, I will not say I will change my society, uh, the society of my country, but uh, I, I try to be active also as a, as a citizen and not only as a civil servant or as an ambassador. Thank <laughs> you for sure. your response. I think I that highlights the problem. <laughs> I think it highlights the problem in general, which is working for the West. You know, if you work for the United States, for France, wherever one of these Western governments, you are limited. And if I got into one of these positions and said what I actually thought and said the truth, I'd be fired because once you call them out, uh, neocolonialism, neoliberalism, they don't want people to hear that. So I think the fact that it's even controversial to advocate for such things in these positions, even though you are supposed to, you know, show the government's um, policies and opinions, I think that in itself is a problem. And I see lots of questions in the chat and stuff like that, kind of going back to your conversation with Mary is that, you know, even though colonialism was 60 years ago, the effects are forever lasting. Yes, people shouldn't live in the past, and I didn't say you said that, but it's extremely difficult to try to 
rebuild these economies and even develop when these systems perpetuating this racism, perpetuating this neocolonialism, neo neoliberalism, all this stuff continues. Even for example, the World Bank and the IMF, they want to develop, right? They want to help develop these countries. They give out loans, they give them situations in emergency relief and et cetera, right? However, they are bound to certain policies in these situations and what choice do they have? They either take it and end up um, being in more debt and are extremely behind in the global capitalist economy, or they can try to be like, you know, Cuba or try to follow socialism or do something different and get no help from the West and from the outside and end up having, you know, internal issues, poverty, and they're just stuck like this. So even the issue of development and even if the West are trying to have these programs I think that they're very superficial, selfish, and continue to exploit these nations. So, Well, the, may I try to ask, first, it is not the West because the IMF and the World Bank are supposed to represent also uh, Africa, for instance, which are members of these institutions, but uh, they have less influence, less power, uh, indeed, uh, because of the repartition of the decision rights. And uh, so, I, I agree with you uh, that uh, the two solutions, you, the two situations you have uh, uh, presented, none of them is satisfactory. So what 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 is the what is the solution? We, as member of the G20 uh, uh, and G the G7, we in the last months, in the context of COVID, we have. Uh, asked for working on the debt uh, of uh, developing countries and we we want to um, um, handle to treat this problem because in the recovery post-covid the less developed nations not only in africa but in particular in africa will find it very difficult to uh, relaunch their economy so uh, we took initiatives first although for us it, it it doesn't go far enough to suspend to uh, to this to discuss to decide a moratorium on the payment of debts but it's it's difficult because there are many countries around the world now which uh, the new 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 uh, new lenders especially china lends uh, much money which is not in the uh, in the in the groups of uh, those countries which uh, in the past worked to, uh, to, to diminish the, the, the load of the debt. So it is one of the ways at least we can act. We, we can try to unite all the, all the folks which have lent money, private, public, multilateral, as you said, the IMF and the World Bank, or the World Bank in that case, and to ask them to, to work together and to help the countries uh, which, have, uh, which have debts uh, so that the, this 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 uh, charge of the debt does not is 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 lighter and uh, is uh, is taken care of so that those countries can relaunch their economies. Uh, otherwise, uh, it will be still more difficult for them than for developed countries. So I recognize that the two situations we describe uh, are uh, not not acceptable. But we try in between to find. Uh, solutions uh, for where um, the developed countries having uh, um, um, taken loans or uh, are uh, really independent can, can of, of deciding their own development and are not stifled by the the the, the load of uh, of their the commitments which they would have taken in the past. So I'm sincerely uh, convinced that my, my country, at least, is sincerely engaged in this uh, in this search for uh, for such solutions. I think it's wonderful that um, you're hopeful and active in that process. I just think when you look at world politics and just the concept of you know power and the way that the international system is and has been, it's not a very feasible thing. It's more of a more of a, a dream because no one who has that much power will want to give it up you know if they exploitation continues no one's going to be like hey you know what let's finally actually be there for africa and help them develop and you know and give up our other methods of continuing 
to enrich ourselves. But I do have another um, related question. Maya, um, because of time and because there's so many people who want to ask questions, mm -hmm. I ask that, um, you know, just keep it at the one question so that we can move on. Because okay. like I said, we have um, the HU French students who want to ask questions and also the audience. Okay, thank you. Merci pour uh, vos commentaires. No, merci. I, I am a responsible. I, I did not understand immediately your, your question. Sorry, excuse me for that. Okay, thank you. Um, so one of the questions- By the way, for that great question. That, right. So one of the questions from the audience is, I quote, why are the Francophone required to countries required to follow laws from French laws, including keeping 50% of the foreign reserves in the French treasury. Since they are now independent countries, can they decide what they want to do with their resources? And I understand it's no longer 50%, but you can go out. Um, it, it's exactly, it's over. It's a reform of the France CFA. And uh, as I said, uh, we, uh, we, we want to get rid of such uh, rules. Uh, we, we, we are uh, reforming the system. Could you go a little bit deeper into how the system is trying being reformed? Yes. Well, I think it it would uh, it's 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 technical, but uh, uh, it is not only the change of the name, but it is uh, the 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 end of centralization of reserves of the central bank of uh, Western Africa in the French Treasury. The, the end of this, and. Uh, the fact that France will not be anymore on the boards of the governing governing bodies of this uh, monetary union, um, so all of this will belong to the past. It's over. We we have decided. It was in the same speech uh, to to ask ourselves, the African members of this monetary union, to to propose a, a, a reform, and we, ha we we are doing that. It's a it's a very good example. Um, I'm seeing a lot of questions uh, within the chat about uh, France's, uh, I guess, attempts to mend the relationship between themselves and Haiti and how uh, France is going to decide, I guess, to amend that relationship in some way, knowing that much of the world agrees that Haiti's present situation is uh, a direct consequence of uh, French exploitation. One of the questions I'm reading here, as I quote, uh, when will France take full fiscal responsibility for Haiti, specifically, when will the money that Haiti paid to France be fully repaid to Haiti in addition to inflation? Like you said, you're, you all are working uh, in reformation of like the structural adjustment programs in Africa and such. Uh, how are you all going to do this in Haiti? <clears throat> well, actually, IT against France uh, got it, it, its independence at the beginning of the uh, 19th century. So it is not 60 years, uh, uh, it's much longer. And, uh, but I don't want uh, saying this to uh, deny our responsibility, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's really a global responsibility. And uh, I, I talk uh, as somebody who has visited Haiti and uh, uh, we, have worked very, very hard. And not only, by the way, the French government, but also the French civil society, because there is probably not any country uh, in the world like Haiti, which is so, um, so dear to the to, to, to the to the 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 hearts of many, many French civil society organizations to so we we, but also as as a government, we uh, we we do our best to uh, to to intervene. And but we are not alone. Uh, the, immediately after the big earthquake, we 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 have uh, we have been very active to 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 come to help IT, and we uh, to, we did it together with uh, with the United States, with Canada, with uh, other American nations, and. Uh, um, we see, we know it is not the only problem. It is not only a question of uh, of nature. It's also a problem of governance. And we we are we are there. We assist, uh, but uh, the Asian 
have to, we'll, we'll have to decide, of course, for, for themselves. But we, 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 we are really uh, also, as permanent member of the UN Nations Security Council, very, very um, active, uh, looking for every possibility to, to help uh, the people in Haiti, both politically and both uh, economically and financially. Okay. And I, I have got some other questions, but I, I am very, very bad in technology. So there were questions about why African country still pay colonial taxes to France. They don't pay, I don't see a, what it mean, uh, what, what is the, the reference because they don't pay any colonial taxes. Uh, why France, when it wants to, is the only one to exp to, to um, exploit raw materials in African countries, not true, completely false. We are by far, uh, we are surely not the country which has the most uh, uh, connections in African nations on the exploitation of raw materials. I just, since I, I will not have time to answer all the questions, I, I answered these two questions. Please, over to you. Of course. Um... I see a question here uh, written by Jude. Jude, if you could, I don't know if your Wi-Fi is a little bit better now, but um, if you'd like to, you can try to speak okay, it out. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of long. So in French, it's, um, vous avez parlé du rôle français à l'étranger um, pour aider l'Afrique à développer et à progresser. Mais je constate une certaine méfiance de cette intention parce que à la base le colonialisme était présenté de la même manière. Alors comment l'Afrique peut-elle faire confiance à, à la présence française et, et le manque d'un prétexte? So I asked, um, you've spoken a lot about the French role abroad and your efforts to help France develop and progress, but I've noticed that lots of people are mistrustful, don't trust this. Um, this intention because colonialism was was presented as the same way. There was the, the pretext that this is something that helps Africa as well. So how can Africa kind of in this day and age um, trust the, the French presence and the lack of a pretext? You're right. Uh, at the time of the colonialism, uh, colonial powers pretended that it was for the good of uh, the colonized countries and, and peoples. Uh, so why? should those countries now trust uh, the same former colonial powers saying that they want to help? I recognize a question. And one, there are two, two answers. First, how can we make our point and convince of our sincerity? I would say first by, by talking as we are doing today, exchanging, and this is really important. And, but the second, answer is that the situation is uh, absolutely uh, different because we have no more well we we might have we, you you might argue we have economic influence and indirect influence but we we speak about sovereign nations there's a concept of sovereignty for all our nations in on an equal basis france niger Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, we are all sovereign nations in a world where, you know, even our European nations, France, Germany, Spain, Belgium, we are not as influential as we were before. So we have a question of sovereignty. We are all sovereign countries and we try all to be democratic, democratic countries where the people decide for themselves, elect their representatives decides a government. This is the situation today. It is not perfect, but it is not anymore one colonial power which decide what will be done for one country which is not your country. So it is completely different, but um, your question is justified and our exchange shows your question is justified. So it's up to us in France or in other uh, UK, Spain, I don't know who, Belgium, it's up to us to, to demonstrate that our policies are really, our offer are real, is really positive for the countries uh, to which we, with which we speak. And then it will be for those countries in Africa, for instance, to decide, but it is not 
now they are sovereign and we have not nothing to impose on them nothing we want to consider them as equal partners and as long as they will not be convinced that we we are treating them as equal partners of course it will be difficult but we want to convince them through our policies through our actions that they are equal partners and that we, 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 we work with them as equal partners. We work with African countries as equal partners against climate change. Climate change is a deadly danger for, for French citizens as it is, and maybe still more for African citizens or in every African country. So I think that one part of the answer in the future is that we will face more and more the same dangers, the same challenges, the same opportunities. And probably the time going on, we will be more and more in the same positions, which is not the case today, of course. Okay, um, thank you for that. We have come to an end to the question part, but I just wanted to like uh, comment on something you said in terms of like African countries being so sovereign, I don't know. I don't know how to uh, pronounce it, but but like definition, they are. However, they're still connected to the many ties and debts and situations that you know cause them to be limited and be burdened and be brought down. But because of time, we have to go and um, go on and finish up with a another a last question. And the last question is for the Howard students, for any students that may may be listening. Is the French embassy in the United States doing anything to open up study abroad opportunities for students? Yes, we, we want very much to um, have more uh, American students in, uh, in our universities and foreign students, or not only American, of course. Uh, we uh, have developed uh, systems of scholarships here in the U U US. Uh, we have a traditional Fulbright uh, scholarships, uh, but we have created a new uh, Gilmore program uh, for uh, uh, community colleges so that we don't only um, offer programs to universities but also to less favored uh, students in community co uh, colleges. This is a general program. And we support uh, exchange uh, programs be between French universities and universities abroad in the United States or in, in other countries. In the case of African students, of course, we have many, many of them in our universities um, and uh, we have more scholarships uh, because uh, the need is, is bigger. And we try to, um, to encourage uh, uh, also um, the development of higher education institutions in African countries in partner as partners of French higher education institutions. So not only individual students, but also scholars, researchers um, uh, circulating between our countries. Finally, of course, all of this is um, endangered by the uh, COVID crisis. Uh, we have in France considered students as being an exception to our travel ban, which means that students could continue to, to come to France in spite of our COVID travel ban. But now it's uh, it's for the time being it's uh, it's uh, in particular difficult because we try uh, we try to fight uh, with vaccination and uh, against the virus and we uh, it's more difficult of course to open uh, like in the U.S. Uh, uh, our universities but we we still are very much very much uh, convinced that the academic uh, uh, exchanges are absolutely essential. So we have invented right now a new, a new program, which is the, the, the consequence of the COVID pandemics, which is a program um, uh, called virt virtual transitioning. Uh, I don't remember what is the name exactly, but the idea is to organize exchanges based like us today on virtual uh, conversations, but being not, not replacing, in-person exchanges, but preparing as a transition, the resuming of academic exchanges across the Atlantic. So this is something we, we might do for, with other countries, but anyway, we have started this new um, ID uh, between the US and uh, French universities. Okay, thank you for that information. We hope that the students present take advantage of, the, of those opportunities. So as we close off, do you have any final thoughts before we give um, our director? 
Deeper. I would no. I have a yes. I have something because I know there were plenty of questions, and uh, I have not seen all the questions. And I have seen a questions about colonial taxes, and I could say that there is no colonial taxes, and and uh, I could answer on raw materials, and I could answer on the reform of France CFA. But I would like to answer all the questions if possible. So if you can send me the questions, uh, because I'm I'm not a geek, I'm not very well talented, and I, I will lose the questions, and I would like to try to answer to the questions which, uh, by lack of time, were not uh, asked. If you accept. Okay, we'll see if we can make that happen because <laughs> we're not tech savvy either. Thank you very much and uh, thank you for this very lively exchange. Uh, I appreciate it very much and uh, thank you for being very sincere, very frank, very candid and uh, I like this and uh, I wanted uh, to have this and uh, I hope we can have more from it and um, sorry for not un un understanding all the questions immediately but uh, I appreciated very much the invitation by your uh, university. Thank Merci you. Oh, j'ai une petite question. Uh, si on veut vous communiquer à l'avenir, uh, on peut faire quoi? Et aussi, si vous avez des stages aux États-Unis ou à Paris aussi, on peut faire quoi pour cette, cette opportunité et truc? Mais il faut vous adresser à l'ambassade, uh, à moi ou uh, à Vincent Michelot. Uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, your director Tonya spoke about uh, our higher education uh, um, ad advisor, Vincent Michelot at diplomacy.gouv.fr. D'accord, so, merci beaucoup. Uh, que ce soit pour de des propositions de stage ou pour uh, d'autres demandes. Ça va? Merci, Soumaya. Eh bien, bravo pour votre français, si j'ai le droit. <rire> Merci beaucoup. En fait, je veux, après Howard, je veux euh, obtenir ma maîtrise et voyager, travailler là-bas aussi. Donc, je suis très contente de vous parler et aussi de faire ces connexions parce que c'est vraiment euh, euh, ce que je veux faire et de travail de développement d'Afrique de l'Ouest francophone et en particulier avec les problèmes sociaux et raciaux à Paris avec euh, les immigrés et tout ce sujet aussi. Ah, et si on peut vous aider, on le fera volontiers. <rire> merci. merci. So, over to whom? Thank you all very much. Um... Wow, that was a lively conversation. Thank you all so much. Uh, it was riveting, really. Um, thank you so much to Ashley and to Mary for, for moderating um, and to the students from the French program. Thank you. Make us very proud with your language skills. Hope to have opportunities. Uh, to das nächste Mal sprechen wir Deutsch. Uh, <laughs> okay. Habla, hablaremos español. La próxima vez, si sí. uh, usted quiere. Uh, I thank you for having uh, underlined my uh, linguistic talents. I am afraid uh, you exaggerated a little this talent, but thank you very much. I'm proud you did it. I heard a story about you uh, surprising someone with your Romanian skills. So really? I'm, sure I'm not underestimating. So did, did you did you hear that? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but thank you so much, Ambassador, for 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 joining us for this conversation, for your openness um, to to engage with our students. Uh, thank you to the students for your excellent questions and engagement. And I do hope that this, as there are forty six questions in the Q and A section that we did not get a chance to get to, we will certainly try to capture those questions and we will send them to you ambassador and um we hope that this was just the first of many future conversations hopefully the next ones will take place on campus yes um, yes Please. absolutely yeah. we will definitely look to make that happen as we hope to all be back in the fall uh so we will see not only you ambassador but the students too and 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 be in person so we will look forward to that uh, later. And thank you all so much. Uh, we did um, live stream this on Facebook. So if you don't already follow us on Facebook, you can
go back and watch the video there. Um, and then we will also, we recorded it. So we'll be posting it on our YouTube channel. So um, thank you all again so much. Uh, and, 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 and maybe don't forget my offer of a couple of minutes ago when I said, we can try, try at least to bring to you, Howard, other, not only ambassadors, but uh, more, in, more interesting people and people who can uh, <laughs> uh, bring to you something from the true French society and also with the African heritage and uh, origin. So if you are interested, uh, we will do that. Absolutely, we will absolutely welcome that. We, we do have a relationship actually with Sciences Po. And mm -hmm. so we have we have welcomed welcomed several students from from there to Howard over the last few years, and we look certainly look to to do that more frequently and with other institutions as well. Um, so yes, we definitely welcome uh, the opportunity to meet and engage with with other young people from France um, with our students. So we will certainly take you up on that offer. And with that, I thank you all very much for joining us. Um, I will, good luck with the rest of your semester to the students. Thank you all everyone who joined us online for your great questions and comments. And please follow us on social media to make sure you don't miss out on the next, uh, the next event that we have coming up. We do have an event actually on March 31st, the next installment of our bunch talks where we focus on the sustainable development goals. We'll be focusing on gender. Uh, so please tune in for that. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest Bye. of your day. Bye. And Bye -bye. thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank, thank you for your invitation. Bye. All the best. Au revoir. Bye-bye. Merci.